Hebrews chapter 11. Now we're going to continue our series of a look at Moses. Actually, we're going to go a little bit further than Moses today. We're going to look at several people, of course. We're going to be looking at Hebrews chapter 11, where it, it's uh, called, uh, what, ch what, what chapter is it called? The faith chapter, okay? And uh, it's probably kind of fitting because we kind of look here at the start of our series on, in verse 24 there, if you'll follow along there. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. We've been talking about the life of Moses. And uh, I thought it was kind of fitting that this also is called sometimes the, the heroes chapter of the Bible. You have all these lists of people who did great things and you know, showed their faith. And, and I talked the other day about uh, Moses when he took his staff when God called him. And, and he said, when you get to Pharaoh, lay it down, lay your staff down, and it's going to become what? A snake. Okay, I've been talking about that last couple of weeks. So ironically enough, we go to cross country camp this week. And so we go out on this. I, how many of you ever been to Brown County State Park? Anybody? I've never been there before. They said, they told me it was silly. Uh, I didn't realize just how until we got over there. Uh, it, was, it was so bad that as we're driving in the park, it was a huge park, largest, I guess, in the state. And uh, as we're driving there, Zach, uh, he's the boys uh, high school cross country coach. And, and uh, he's driving a bus, I'm driving a minibus, he's driving a minibus, he's got the diesel, and he's in front of me, and we're going up this hill, and I thought that literally we were going to have to get out of our bus and push his bus up the hill. It was really that bad. And so we get there, and Zach and I decide, we look at on the brochure, and, and the Trail 9 is real close to ours, but it says rugged on the brochure, so we decide we're going to go out and we're going to check it out. So we walk about a mile into the trail, it's on a ridge. And the trail takes you either on a three-mile loop or a, a, an out and back about seven miles total. And if you go out and back to seven miles, you come to a lake. Well, so we're on the ridge, so we know we're probably going to go downhill somewhere. That means if you go down, you're eventually, if you go back, you're going to go up, right? So we walk this trail, we walk on the ridge for about a mile or so, and we notice that it's kind of going down, and we thought, well, this isn't too bad. On the brochure, it says rugged. On the sign, it says moderate. So we're thinking, it may not be that bad. So we go out on the run. Me and a couple other boys that are kind of nursing some injuries, we go on the three-mile trail. They go on the outback seven, everybody else. Well, as we were walking on the trail, Zach and I saw this snake which we were pretty sure it was a, a rattlesnake, but we weren't real sure until we got back to camp and looked at the picture that was posted. Warning, these have been spotted here. Rattlesnakes have been spotted here. And once we saw the picture, we thought, yeah, that was a rattlesnake. So one of the other boys uh, on the way out of the run, they saw a rattlesnake on the way out of their run as well. I must say this, though. When we ran Trail 9, it was so bad and so horrible that uh, I have to say, if I was a samurai sword, uh, warrior, I would have to follow my sword because I lost my man card on that trail. Okay? It was bad. I mean, it was really bad. I had, to, I had to stop three times going up the hill. And everybody else who went the out and back, they had to stop like three times too, with the exception of maybe one of the kids. So I had a little trouble sleeping that night, thinking about, because I hate snakes. Okay? Anybody else hate snakes? Yep. Can't, can't stand them. Can't stand them. And so, you know, I was sleeping by myself that night, and, and every so often I'd go over to the zipper. Make sure that thing was zipped up. <laughs> that was Monday night, so it was okay until Wednesday. Broad daylight. All of us are walking around the, you know, the campground and everything. Zach goes into his tent. He steps out of his tent, and he comes running over to us because as soon as he stepped out of his tent, he heard a little rattle over here. And he looks down and there's a rattlesnake right there by his tent opening. And he takes off. And he's like, guys, he's like, this. <laughs> there's a rattlesnake over there. We're like, oh, get out of here. There is not. I didn't believe you because, I mean, it's broad daylight, you know, and all this commotion's going on. We've been walking through the campground and everything, and sure enough, it, there was a snake over there. And, of course, I was thinking about, you know, Moses and all that. I'm thinking, could you imagine reaching down and picking that snake up by the tail? <laughs> so we go along. They decide they, they catch them. When they're found in the campground, they catch them. I didn't know this. They're endangered, so they don't kill them. Had they not been around, probably would have been a dead snake. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. 
So the guy is wait, we're waiting for this little girl to come, this lady to come, she comes, she has the equipment, she has the only thing I can say is it's a stick with a pair of tongs on the end of it, is what it looks like. And then she has a stick with a or not a stick, but a, a thing with a, a little hook on it, and you've got to put it on its neck, you know. And the other guy has the little tongs, and they decide they're gonna be, this thing is five or six foot long, it's this big around. And he decides he's gonna he's gonna pick this up. So he, he picks it up by the head, and it can't it won't even hold the snake. It just falls out. It's so heavy. And he he, he so he picks it up. He says, Oh, it's not holding. It's not holding. It falls on him. He says, Oh, it's coming after you. <laughs> and the baby's going like this, trying to get the head down. And I and I'm videotaping because I think I got some good stuff coming. And, and they are. So he grabs it again, but this time in the middle of the body, and he picks it up. And he says, oh, I got it. And then falls down. He says, Oh, it's coming after you. <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking at Zach, and we're like backing up, and we're like, where did money get fit? So I'm filming, okay? So again, they're just over and over, and finally they get it thrown in the thing, and then they get it in there without getting bit, which I'm surprised. And he, see, he looks at me, and we said, but how often does this happen? Because I'm thinking, i got to go to bed one more night. I wanted to leave. Zach's like, oh, we'll, we'll be all right. He said, oh, well, we pick him up. You know, we'll pick him up about five times a year. Later, we find out that another guy says, oh, no, we see him at least once a day. <laughs> really? Oh, and the guy, before he leaves, he says, oh, yeah, his brother's probably around here somewhere. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously. <laughs> then he says, then he says, this is the kicker. He says, oh, yeah, their den's right over there. I said, just how far over there is over there? And he said, oh, no, I can't tell you that, but it's, it's, it's a ways over there. You don't have to worry about it. There's about 35 of them over in there that have been tagged. And there's, there's a bunch of copperheads in there with them. He said, that, they, they don't just come, like, straight to you. They, they spread out. And I'm like, that doesn't make me feel any better. <laughs> so for the rest of the evening, I'm like this everywhere I go. And I'm thinking about Moses. I'm thinking, there is no way. Could you imagine picking that up and it turned back into the stick? It's not. So it rains that night. We get back and this park worker comes. About four or five different people come by just to say, hey, I hear they found a big rattlesnake in your campsite. That must have been the talk of the, the park, I guess. And the guy comes through and he's an Indian guy. And he says, he says, hey, he says, I uh, heard found a rattlesnake in your camp. Like, yeah. He says, well, since it's rain, you might be able to look out for copperheads because they've been seen in this area, especially when it rains. <laughs> Oh, then they asked us, they said, so uh, what time are you guys leaving? When do you leave? We said, well, tomorrow at noon, but maybe sooner. <laughs> tomorrow at noon. He said, okay, well, then when you guys are gone, we'll release it back when you leave. <laughs> really? <laughs> so they release them back there. So because they leave a, a scent and they can find their way back, which was news to me. And we were glad to leave <laughs> the next day. Could have been sooner. That being said. Mark. <coughs> Did you not think of sleeping in the bus? <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought of that. I thought of that. Yes, I did. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11. All of these people, Abel, Enoch, Noah, Moses, Abraham, all of these people you have listed here, you have them all read out. You have Samson, you have David, you have Samuel, you have the prophets and others that aren't named by name. You have them all throughout here, and they all have something in common. And the number one thing they have in common is what we talked about before is faith. Notice what verse, notice uh, verse 4 says, by faith Abel, notice verse 5, by faith Enoch, verse 7, by faith Noah, Verse 8, by faith Abraham, and it goes on and on. By faith Moses, by faith, by faith, by faith. They all had this thing in common. And look what it says in verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to what? What is it? It's impossible to what? Please God. It's impossible without faith to please God. Now, trusting God is it's pretty easy, isn't it? No, it's not. Sometimes it's the most difficult thing you'll ever do. I remember going to California, and some of you have heard this before, many of you have it, but I remember moving to California, $25 in my pocket, one of the dumbest things I've ever done. Don't, don't recommend doing it. 
went out with a buddy of mine. We, we moved out there. He had lined up for us a, a, an opportunity to sell cars out there, new and used cars. Car salesman, thank you. I go out there, they go through the training, and the training is, out there anyway, this Nissan place was, uh, I'm not going to go into the detail other than it was really dirty, all right, how they try to, to trick you into coming back and keep coming back, and, and you know, you take their license and registration, and when they leave, you give them their keys, and then they, they drive off a lot, and they realize that they left, that you've got their license and registration, they have to come back, you know, all this opportunity, you had to do it, you had to sell that way, why? I didn't want to do it that way. I just didn't think of, feel like it was right. Well, I got called in the office. And every time somebody came on the lot, you had to go out there and you had to approach them and you had a certain thing you had to do. And I wouldn't do that. I'd go out there and I'd say, hey, can I help you with anything? No, we're just looking. Okay. <laughs> well, they didn't like that. So they called me in the office after about a week and they said, you know, we have a certain way we do things around here. And if you don't do it that way, we're going to have to let you go. And so I did a lot of soul searching. And I went out to the car, I went out to my car at break time, and, and I, I was just praying, and I had a little devotional book out there, and I, I was just, Lord, you're going to have to tell me what to do here, because I don't want to compromise. I don't want to compromise who I am, I don't want to compromise my Christianity, I don't want to compromise, you know, my uh, integrity. And so I opened up this devotional, and on that particular day, it was, don't worry about tomorrow. You know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So I made up my mind that moment, I was going to have, I was going to trust God, and I was going to do it the way I feel like he would want me to do it. And so for 30 days, I continued to do that. I would sell it the way I thought it should be done. Integrity and not pushing, not doing it dishonestly, not trying to trick them in any way. And by the end of that month, I was the third best salesman out of about 30 people. And I sold 28 cars in that month's time. But doing it what I felt was God's way, not mine and not theirs. But I remember thinking, I've got to trust him here. I'm out here in, <laughs> in California with $25 in my pocket, which was a stupid mistake that I made, but still had to trust God to help me out with that. Faith sometimes is, is, is hard. Can you imagine Moses standing before the Red Sea and God says, lift up your rod. We're going to part this thing. Can you imagine? Would it take a little bit of faith to lift that thing up? A lot. Uh, can you imagine? I'd be thinking, if I that up, people are going to think I'm crazy. I've got these millions of people following me. I'm delivering them from Egypt. And if I hold this up and nothing happens, you know, it'd be like, you know, you think of Trump Heston. You can't help but think of him when you think of Moses, right? Part! And nothing happens. I was just kidding. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, what, what do you do if nothing happens? Seriously, what do you do? It takes a lot of faith, and it took a lot of faith for these people to do what they did. Abraham, when he sacrificed Isaac, when God asked him to sacrifice Isaac, it took a lot of faith to trust God that either he's going to raise him from the dead or he's going to provide another sacrifice. It took a lot of faith. What if he didn't? What if he didn't? What if he killed him? What if he sacrificed his son and he didn't resurrect him and he didn't provide another sacrifice? That's faith. Another thing they all had in common was they did something. They all had faith, but faith without works is what? It's dead faith. If it's not proved by works, it's a dead faith. Notice what it says there in verse 4 again. By faith, Abel what? Offered. He did something. Look at verse 5. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. It doesn't say that in this particular passage, but the reason that God took Enoch is because he walked with God, we find out in Genesis. He did something. By faith, verse 7, by faith Noah, being divinely warned of the things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark. You see, they did something, all of them. By faith, uh, Abraham, verse 17, by faith Abraham offered up Isaac. They all did something. So if you have faith, you're going to do something. Now, if I prayed in that parking lot out in California when I was on my break and I said, Lord, I really need you to take care of me. I'm going to do it your way. I'm trusting you to meet all my needs and take care of tomorrow. And I got out of the car and I did nothing. Did I have faith? No. I had to do something, which was to follow him. Faith without works is dead. And the third thing is it cost every one of them everything. It cost every one of them everything. Think of think of Noah as he's building. Many believe that that uh, it hadn't rained up to that point. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Noah building an ark 
And I've said this before, from, from right here to this point on the stage, all the way down to the stop sign there next to the Methodist Church. That's how long the arc would have been. I mean, I've measured it. I've actually measured it. So I did a tape measure and I've measured it. From this point down to the, the, the stop sign down there is how long that arc would have been. And he's building this and he's preaching for years. He's saying, it's coming. There's a flood coming. And the people are probably thinking, this man's crazy. This man's a lunatic. It, it cost him everything, his reputation, on and on and on. Look at verse uh, 26 in Hebrews. Or let's, let's look at verse 24. We'll start there again. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. You see, he wasn't focused on the treasures of Egypt, but the treasures that were out there in the future, the, the riches of Christ. Now, over in Matthew, you can write this down and look at it later, or you can turn there if you can get there quick enough. I've got mine marked. But in uh, Matthew 6, verse 19 says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So many of us live for this moment right here. And I don't know how... To better illustrate than to, to illustrate it by an illustration I saw Francis Chan give the other day. Let's say that this is our life. This is our life. This is eternity. Now let's act like that this goes on for eternity. Okay? There's no end to this. This is our life. And and this right here at this point represents when we came into existence. And then our life goes on for eternity and for eternity and for eternity. Millions and millions of years we have left in eternity. And this right here, this red part, represents your life here on earth. From the time you're born, and there's coming a day when we're going to stand in the presence of God. There's coming a day when we're going to stand before Him. We're going to face death unless He comes before then. We're going to face death. And this right here represents that time that we have here. 70, 80, 90, whatever. 10 years. Whatever. And we spend all of our time making decisions, worrying about this little moment in time. And we sit there and we think, well, if I make this decision right here, it's going to affect this right here. And I'll tell you what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from here, and I'm going to work and work and work and work and work and save enough money that I can go do whatever I want, play golf, do whatever, and then I can re retire right here and just, you know, lift up this little spot right here. Yeah. And we forget about this. Because what we do here, the decisions that we make here, does affect this, but it also affects this. Right? I mean, how many of us have ever blown some money? I mean, we blow it on the stupidest stuff. I do it. You know, can you imagine? One day we're going to stand before God and say, hey. not that, but <laughs> well, we might. I don't know. I can, feel, I can see you when, we, when you initially stand before God. You might do that. <laughs> And you just wonder what God will say. I bless you. I mean, can you imagine? You, you have a thousand dollars and you drop it on something. Something pointless. And then you die. And you stand before God and He says, What would you do with that? Well, I got this with it. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you much rather have said, you know, I helped somebody who needed it? You know, we spent so much time ahead. Aren't we, aren't we really proud because we, we spent so much time watching, you know, you know, 70, you know, movies? Or we spent all this time reading all these other books except for God's Word? Or we've done all this thing and we, 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 we're so worried about this moment in time we forget that, you know, we're laying down for ourselves treasures in heaven. We have all this, millions and millions of years that we're, that we're working for, 
Not for salvation, don't get me wrong. We're not saved by our works. But what we do here will determine whether we have reward or regret. And when we stand before Him, are we going to have regret? Or are we going to have reward? You know, and, and what, what, what the problem is, is that people look at the Christian life and they say, that's stupid. You're going to forgive them for what they did to you? You know, there's no way I'm going to forgive. You know, I'm going to get even. Because my choice here, and then I'm going to feel real good down the road because I got even with it. But you see, that affects here. And you know, they say, that's stupid. The first, first will be last, last will be first. You know what I want to say is, I'm not stupid, you're stupid. You're stupid because you're working for this right here, but I'm working for this. That's what really matters. And when you stop and you look at it, Do we give to receive? We plan, we plan, we plan, but we plan it for the wrong thing. If the band will come. You know, so many of us live our lives and and, and uh, I want to give you I want to give you some song titles of, of some hymns. The way we would sing them if we really meant them. If, if we sing, if we were really honest, I should say, if we were really honest with ourselves, here's how we would sing these hymns. The song I Surrender All, we would probably sing I Surrender Some. There will be sprinkles of blessings. Fill my spoon, Lord. Oh, how I like Jesus. I love to talk about telling the story. Take my life and let me be. It is my secret what God can do. There is scattered, scattered cloudiness in my soul today. How about where He leads me, I will follow? Will be where He leads me, I will consider following? Or how about instead of just as I am, just as I pretend to be? When the saints go sneaking in? How about that? <laughs> sit up, sit up for Jesus. Instead of a mighty fortress, a comfy mattress is our God. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Yeah. Instead of for, uh, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, oh, for a couple of tongues to sing. How about amazing grace? How interesting the sound. Go tell them on the speed pump. How about praise God from whom all affirmations flow? Or how about my hope is built on nothing much? How about instead of rock of ages, how about the pillow of ages fluffed for me? Joyful, joyful, we think thee pretty good. How about instead of blessed assurance, we have blessed punch? Yeah. Listen, I want to encourage you as kids are coming in. To stop living for now and start living for the future. Stop living for now and start living for the future. Will you stand? If you have any need, we'd invite you to come today. If, you just, if you've never accepted Christ's gift of salvation, I'd invite you to come too as we sing. And again, if you just want to, if somebody agree in prayer with you, I'd ask you to come.
Sandy and the pointers here have come to place their membership today. I just want to ask you guys, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, died and rose again for the forgiveness of your sins? And that as your confession of faith, let's just offer a prayer up to them. This has got to be blessed. Like Lord, we just thank you so much. And we just lift them up to you. And we just thank them uh, willing to place, officially place their membership here at Walton Street with us. And we just pray, Lord, that you help us to use our gifts and our talents and our abilities to minister to their needs and that you would just help them as well to use their talents and their gifts to just encourage and strengthen us, Lord. And as we rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep, we just thank you, Lord. We pray special blessing upon that. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you can be dismissed, don't forget about the dinner right after church. Oh, we're not dismissed yet. So just stay right where you are. <laughs> okay, guys, it's time to decide who's going to get the pie in the face. I know you're excited. But let's, say our, let's say our verse that we learned this week. Can you guys say it? Your parents will all be proud of you. Are we ready? For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful one. Proverbs 2. Awesome. Thanks, guys. It's good that you learned God's word this week. Okay, now I need all of my superheroes and my supervillains to line up up front, please.
Ah, 